Hey everyone, uh, and welcome. This is my tutorial on using GPT-3 um, and OpenAI in order to make a perfect resume and job recommender for yourself. I am not a programmer, full disclosure. I've always found programming to be overwhelming. I'm not even that good in Excel, to be honest with you. So if I can do this, I promise you anyone can. It feels natural to me, someone that's a writer, someone who went to art school. So give it a try. I promise it'll take five minutes or less if you follow this tutorial and really allow you to make some really cool stuff. So to get started, you're gonna need to go to OpenAI. Uh, this is a completely free website you can go to. It's currently in beta. Once on here, just go ahead and make an account. It should take less than a minute. And when you're in your account, go ahead and get an API key created. So you're gonna have to go ahead and here and make that API key. Um, once you have that AI, API key copied, come back to your Google Sheet, come into extensions, hit app scripts. And what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna take some code from the link I'm gonna provide you in the video notes. And that code comes right here um, from Abhi Raja. He provides it. You just gotta come here into his GitHub and copy and paste this code. So the first 46 lines into here. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to your open AI and copy and paste this code right into this first line and you're done. You've installed GPT-3 open AI prompt into your uh, Google sheet. This is the extent of programming you need for it. And if you need uh, help on this, again, I am gonna put step-by-step -step directions in the video notes, but again, it's simply just copy and pasting this key that you get from open AI for free into this box and you get all of this code right here from this uh, sheet. So it's just two copy and paste and you get API, um, this code installed right into your Google Sheets and you can start doing AI. Um, once you've hit run, you can come back to your Google Sheets and you're good. You can start using the AI function. So how exactly does this work? So um, I'll tell you what I typed and then I'll tell you what's generated by the AI. So in this first row here, I just typed a list of skills that I have. So you can see that within these skills, I wrote Java, blockchain, sales, UX design. I tried to make it as broad and kind of different as possible. And then to the right of it, I wrote my years of experience. So I wrote, I have four years with Java, four years with HTML. So that was all, all I had to write. Again, this if you're someone writing a resume, you probably have to do this all the time or you might have to think through this. So keeping a list of this is always helpful. Then you have rules. Um, and categories and these are basically kind of how you can make rules for the ai to operate so we'll come back to that in a second but these are the only things i've typed into this whole document the rest of this is completely ai generated and i'm going to go through step by step how i made each column so first let's talk about uh, skill type so the first thing that i might want to do when i'm I'm'll making a resume is generate um, what type of skills they are. So when I'm on the resume, I'm gonna kind of want to format it. I have a skills section and I want to put stuff under the correct section. So what I did here is I wrote equal AI. This is how you start the function. And then I wrote the categories are technical skills, soft skills, and language skills, period. So I just wrote that these are the categories. What category is A2? Reply with just the category. So what you can see here is I did a super basic line of code um, that I wrote, I made up. It's, it's, you know, I could probably use a function or some command, but we're just using natural language. I, you could have, I could have wrote the categories for these skills are, and it would still work. I don't have to use these exact words, but these are just the categories. And then I wrote what language is, and I chose A2. So um, again, I could have chosen you know, anything here, but I chose A2. So after I do that, you can see that the AI generates technical skills. So let's say for example, I wanted to get rid of these. So I wanted to say uh, just language. It would load and it would tell me technical skills. I could do it for all of these. And you're seeing the AI in real time trying to generate. So technical skills, technical skills, language, because the new English is a language, technical skills, soft skills, soft skills, technical skills. This is a real time, just a function running. I'm not doing anything. It's just sorting for me. Okay. So let's look at the next thing here, which is like, I want to categorize these skills. So I want to decide if I'm a beginner or an advanced here. 
So what I did here is I hit equal categorize. This is another kind of um, thing the AI package comes with. So you can see I wrote equal categorize and then I chose um, my rules. So I basically said a dollar sign a 21 dollar sign because this means it's fixed. That means it's not like a changing range for those who don't use Excel dollar sign a dollar sign 22. Um, so my rules are if this number is greater than three, write the word beginner if or less than three, write the word beginner. If it's greater than three, make it advance or less than or equal to three, make it advance. So what I've basically done here is I've made an if then statement. Um, I could easily change this on the fly. I, I can just change the rules here. Um, so let's, I can make it two instead of uh, three. And you'll see it automatically loads for me. Um, but I'm literally just making rules. Uh, again, you, you could use an if then statement in Excel to look at this, but I'm someone who just likes natural language. Um, so, it, you know, for me, it's easier to just write if less than two, write beginner, and then make this category be whatever this number is, sort. Um, sometimes the AI gets overwhelmed. It will uh, kind of give you something like this. Um, and sometimes that kind of wants you to prompt a new thing or rewrite the prompt. Um, and sometimes, you know, you can just kind of rewrite it here. Uh, for some reason, when I added art skills, Figma got right, or you can just redrag it. Sometimes the AI generates, um, it does have like a time cap. Again, uh, this is eight, so it's greater than two. So maybe I just need to hit enter again. Um, I don't know why it's getting confused. Um, but either way, it should be pretty good at this. Uh, Next up, let's talk about um, writing a description. I think this is something that it's really used for. So, you know, obviously bucketing the categories was cool. The fact that it knew Java was a technical skill, um, making up your own rules is cool. So again, this is something that you probably have a math function for, but you can now use natural language for. But next up, um, this is probably my favorite thing is you can just write a natural thing and it'll do it for you. So like write a one sentence job description of again uh, at a2 and it'll tell me um, this description so I could also say write a one uh, sentence description of a2 for a five-year-old and it would generate so Java is computer language to help people create websites and games you can see it's very different than the, the job interview um, so, you know, I could use this for a resume or I could use this, um, you know, to explain to my five-year-old. Now, again, maybe the five-year-old doesn't know what the Ethereum blockchain is, but still pretty impressive um, that it knows, like, for example, Figma is a picture that helps you make programs and designs on the computer. Um, again, you can see that, like, literally by writing rights for a job interview, it gave me, I'm an experienced English teacher because it looked at the eight uh, with a passion of helping students to reach their potential. Um, Again, you can write anything in here as long as you, you just really write the sentence and then if you're referring to a piece of data, put quotes and dollar signs around it and you're, or at signs around it or and signs and you're good to go. I don't do that. Um, next up, um, it can also answer questions. So I said, uh, equal AI, um, how many people know the skill in A2? Respond with estimate number. And you can see here that it'll tell me 10 million developers worldwide are proficient in Java. So now I'm starting to say, okay, Java is maybe a skill I want. Um, in fact, I, if I wanted to, I could put only the estimate number if this is too much data and it'll just give me 8 million. I'm not sure why it changed the number, but probably pulling from a different data source. Um, again, uh, this can quickly adapt and give you answers. So now I can kind of see uh, maybe the most important skill I have here is Solidity, right? Because, uh, or maybe Binance Blockchain, because these are tens of thousands where the rest are like millions and, and billions in the case of um, English. Uh, next up, I can ask it even more complex questions than that. So like, is A2 used at Google? Answer yes, no, or maybe. Um, I'm getting an error here. So maybe let's just get rid of this and see the logic behind it, because if I don't kind of make a limitation like that, it'll give me the full logic of the answer. So is this used at Google? No, Google does not use AWS. Google has its own cloud platform. So 
So it might have been a little confused uh, because some maybe some teams at Google use AWS, uh, but in general, it's not a helpful skill, um, which is cool that do that. So you can get the logic or you can use something like only uh, yes, no. Again, I'll write one of these in real time just so you can, can see it. So um, equal AI. Um, what country is, oh, you got to put a little quotation mark. Sorry, these are the little quirks. What country is Java? What country is Again, for someone like me, he's not like a huge programmer. That, the hardest part is learning these little things. But what country is and uh, is quote and a two quote because we're, it's a fixed thing instead of a range um, most popular in? And Java is most popular in India. And again, we can just drag this and we can see in real time. Um, it being used and again for those that don't use excel very much you can use a wrap function to kind of get this more e easily um so yeah this is uh this is how this works um the next thing that we we did so we, we kind of got these categories right and we got these rules and then we were using these for these sheets and we had the skills so what if i will now wanted to kind of take this data and make something more organic. So the next thing I said was describe me. So this might be something you put at the top of a resume. Uh, and you can see here, uh, equal AI, uh, describe the perfect job for someone who has skills A2 through A11. So I didn't use the at sign because it's a range this time. Um, and we're not gonna be dragging it, we're just answering it once. And the AI says the perfect job is a project manager. Um, the next prompt I literally said, what company is hiring and then I, Again, I did uh, set the, the quotation mark and E16 because it's a fix, not range right now. And most companies are hiring project managers, Google, Glassdoor, whatever. So you can see very quickly, I could probably just copy and paste this onto a resume um, or use a resume formatter uh, and quickly get my resume built. Um, I can make my own rules for this. I can make categories for it if I need to help categorizing stuff. And where this really shines, I think, is answering questions and kind of coming up with these um, uh, kind of more obscure or, or, or professional language things um, that you need written out. So again, I thought this was really cool. I think that for someone who doesn't really program a lot, the fact that you can kind of make your own rules engines super easily um, and all you have to do is basically um, choose the rules and then um, you know apply them. I think I think that's neat. So. Um, yeah, let me know what you think if you have questions. I thought I used this to do a little bit of resume skill builder, but I'm sure that it could be used for many things. So uh, reply on Twitter, follow us on Educoin app, um, NFTs or Educoin NFTs on Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Um, and we are happy to help.